Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Kashif Booth Podcast. If you're new here, each week I sit down with a guest and we discuss their career so far, the highs, the lows, and what's next for them. Today's guest is Jeddah Kacholi. She is a writer, producer, filmmaker, actress from Australia, but now lives, well, she did live in London, now she's out in Wales. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome to the show, Jeddah. Hiya, thanks for having me. I'm so happy to have you on. Like, I mean... I was just saying to you before we press record, like I've known you for almost eight years, which is strange to say, like, I know, (laughs) it's nearly a decade. (laughs) I know, because that's when I made that terrible documentary when I was trying to figure out what I had to do, but (laughs) it wasn't that bad. And also we had a lot of fun doing that. I remember you and I had a very similar sense of humor. So that's kind of what cemented our relationship. Exactly. But it's so funny, like that was in what, 2015, and mm-hmm. then we just reconnected like a few years later, like on like social yeah. media and stuff. And then I remember you DM'd me and was like, we should catch up and talk and stuff. And it just went from there where we ended up doing Nimison and Newlyweds and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just kind of shows how important it is to sort of keep touch with people. And yeah. because you never really know like where you're going to meet down the road and stuff mm-hmm. especially in our industry you're always running into people mm-hmm. sometimes people you don't like sometimes mm-hmm. people you do <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, but yeah 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 100 100 on don't like you're like okay i'm making a note of not working with you ever again <laughs> and then you tell everybody else that you know about that <laughs> yeah 100 100 i've done it all the time i'm like this person is a bitch and then they're like oh what have you heard of this name well that person like i remember i worked with somebody on like a commercial kind of thing that i did late last year and one of the wardrobe stylists i'd worked with before and i was like well, we worked with him before, but then the clothes didn't come on time. And then when they did, they were incorrect. And I was like, oh, I don't know. But this time he did do a better job to a certain degree. Give people the second but, chance, right? Yeah, exactly. But we, we we had like, time was of essence. We only had 10 days to shoot. So, so yeah. So like literally produce and do everything in 10 days. So yeah. So yeah. So yeah. essentially, how did you get started as an actor? Um, really weirdly, actually, I, my whole sort of creative career started, like, I I was a singer in a band. And um, then like, you know, my family was sort of like, well, what are you going to do with your life? And I'm like, well, I better go make some money. So um, I I did a science degree and I became a scientist. (laughs) And then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I did I did the usual thing where you're like, oh, I'll try and live the, the normal, like, nine to five mm-hmm. and everything like that. And then, um, yeah, I was just extremely unhappy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, bugger it, I'll go to acting school. So I was like, I was like 23, 24 when I went to acting school. And um, my first role before I started acting school was with my mate in um, this sci-fi film called Queen of the Bees, where I played this, like, gorilla general person that wanted to kill the new world and I'm like perfect this really goes with all my anger issues I'm up for it um so yeah that kind of got everything started and then literally from there it was sort of like this meteoric move into like I left my I left my partner at that time I went straight into acting school it was really intense it was like a full year like all my emotions were ripped out of me um and then like straight after acting school I got a job at a fringe show um as a backup singer for this really well-known drag queen called Dolly Diamond um and I learned a lot from her and then um yeah I just sort of and then I met my husband and then I moved to London (laughs) and then uh, you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but then it continued you continued acting you got an agent over here you continued pursuing your passion as well that's how we ended up meeting as well so cool. yeah yeah mm-hmm. I think it was really um I think because I felt like I wasted so much time trying to be like I guess normal I don't know I, I don't know if that's the right word I apologize if it's not or just um, a safe job, you know, nine to five, the typical, okay, I get benefits and I will get my, send my holidays this year, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, I tried to be, I tried to make my life as comfortable as possible and it clearly wasn't what was meant for me. And I think sometimes when you get on the right path, you just get slingshot sort of to the moment that you're meant to be at. And mm-hmm. yeah, so when I got to London, it was like another it was like another world as well because Australia is so um, like 
I mean, it's big in terms of land mass, but there's not as many opportunities. And like, uh, it's pretty conservative in terms of their ideas and everything as well. While London, like, you know, they really want you to push towards the edge of things and, and um, you know, their ideas are a lot more uh, out there and uh, conceptual as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was definitely an eye opener and I had a lot to absorb in just a short amount of time, nice. for sure. Because I have spoken to quite a few, f I mean, it's weird, like the past year I've connected with a lot of Australian filmmakers who've moved to London and they've just said the same thing. Like it's very small, it's very niche, you just kind of will be working on the same type of shows or you might yeah. end up on Home and Away and Neighbours. But I know Neighbours got cancelled. <laughs> so yeah, only, yeah. only Home and Away is still on the air. Don't judge me, I used to watch both many years ago. Addicted. No, I don't know why. Don't know why I was watching this. <laughs> it was like <laughs> every soaps. <laughs> midday afternoon. Listen, I needed to watch my neighbors and home and away. But um, <laughs> I totally understand that because it's just like when some people come, like in London, they want to go to America because there's more going on in terms of the mm. type of stuff you can create. But I feel like, especially in London now, the industry's changed in the last, what, 10 years so much with streaming. So that we have so much access to TV and film. So there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's a lot more content being made for sure, especially mm -hmm. like, um, and also because of the pandemic as well, people have really changed like how they, yeah. they view their entertainment. Like, um, you know, people still want to go to a cinema, but they're also quite happy to pay the fifteen pounds to home premiere the newest Marvel or mm -hmm. whatever's out. Yeah, true. So you know, you sort of have to move with the landscape. But then at the same time, I think for actors that does create a lot more opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you have like a sort of niche skill or or something like that. I know with a lot of the Marvel people, like uh, you know, if you you're really good at like sword fighting or anything like that, like you you can get a lot more opportunities mm -hmm. in those worlds, which you know they're big commercial successes, and mm -hmm. you know it's just another foot in the door, right? So when you did move to London, what were some of the challenges you faced as an actor being Australian? Did you feel like you had to like put on a British accent to get roles? Yeah, for sure, <laughs> definitely. I mean, obviously, um, you know, because a lot of the roles that that were out there, they're not they're not for Australians. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so, uh, but also, I was pretty lucky because of the because of how I grew up. I sort of I've moved around like all over the world. My accent's not like super like Oka like <laughs> oh, yeah, you go and rah, rah, rah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of have a, like a more a softer accent so it's easy for me to slip into an English accent but don't ask me to do like a Mancurian or, or anything like mm -hmm. Birmingham or anything like that like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will butcher that <laughs> like, okay, terribly. okay. Mm -hmm. so yeah that was that was a big challenge also getting onto spotlight at the time I know they've made it easier now mm -hmm. but um because my my school wasn't recognized because it was an American American school okay um that was based in LA it wasn't recognized within spotlight and I didn't I only had two credits instead of three like professional um but the funny thing is now everyone was like why didn't you just lie <laughs> why didn't you lie and just put on like this fake credit and I'm like I don't know like I just I was trying to be honest Yay. and like <laughs> get it mm -hmm. um but then I was really lucky because I actually met my um now agent John he does mm -hmm. a lot of um stuff with the Guardian and stuff oh, like okay. that um and he runs this like sort of one-to-one -one mentoring thing and I just got in contact with him and I was like hey you know completely new here I'm really green can you give me advice and we came up with a plan together and then within like four months I was on spotlight so nice. you know and I was getting some good roles and and then um I got an audition for like a big feature called The Beast Must Die which was like it was a proper like horror Mm. where it was like you, you could have worn the werewolf prosthetics I, I fucking wanted that so bad know, do you know what I mean I know exactly. <laughs> I know you did <laughs> it was just like it would have been so cool to be like this like werewolf creature thing mm -hmm. um anyway so when he heard about that he's like oh I really think you should meet my wife and she runs my agency and we met and then yeah I, I, cut, mm. I got signed from there mm. so it was an eye opener, but I think I had a relatively easy transition in compared to like other people that I've heard that have had a really hard time sort of trying to get an agent and everything like that. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. so. Did you feel like, you know, like when you start out in the industry, you've got to, okay, make all these connections, connect with filmmakers, producers, writers, you know, 
did it feel overwhelming or did it feel like yeah did it feel overwhelming to like come to a new country and have to start all over again that whole process yeah um I mean it was overwhelming for sure like moving to a completely new place because it's still culture shock in Mm -hmm. a way like um you know figuring out sort of because I'm quite an honest person as well and I and I was realizing that (laughs) yeah (laughs) but I was realizing with a lot of like British people when they're like oh how are you they don't actually want to like no. hear how you are they kind of just want to they're just like oh I know I'm fine you know stiff upper lip we're all good <laughs> moving yeah. on mm-hmm. and I and I struggle really with a lot of like small conversation I find it um I my husband always says to me he's like you're just way too deep like <laughs> you know I, I always want to like talk about like how this affects society and blah yeah. blah blah I don't it's so wanky mm-hmm. um but yeah it it was definitely overwhelming and I you do kind of feel this this need to sort of make these connections what can I like this is when I was first starting by the way like what can I get out of this relationship blah 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 and that's really not the way you should mm-hmm. go about networking at all you shouldn't go into that relationship going how can I benefit from this mm-hmm. you should just go in wanting to know that person yeah. just like you and I like we just mm-hmm. got on and yeah. everything like that and then mm-hmm. later on we worked together like and yeah. that was like three or four years yeah true. you know mm-hmm. so it is yeah I definitely think the mindset that's around acting and the things that you need to do and like how mm-hmm. on you have to be and rah 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 mm-hmm. that definitely can that can bring you down and and then everything and then you've also got like the toxic positivity side of it mm. where you're like constantly they're like yeah I am on it I am the best I am this mm. I am that mm. and then there's like no critical self-analysis whatsoever so That's yeah now you made a really yeah. good point about critical analysis and the hyper positivity because there's so many actors who I know who always come to me with like advice and they're like you know oh how can I do this how can I do this and I'm like you need to train like I feel like everyone you need to go to drama school you need to refine your skills you need to really Mm. really develop yourself as an actor even for me as a filmmaker I don't know everything I'm still developing and growing as well because we don't know everything no one does you're gonna just like when you're writing a show for example somebody who's writing a show from episode one to episode six needs a writer's room you need yeah a writer's room. that's why euphoria season two was so bad because he clearly had no no um writer's room you know right, <laughs> so right. it's like you need other voices you need to hear different experiences and how you can develop a character develop a story so it is really important that you do that so yeah but one thing yeah. no go on oh no no I was just gonna say yeah definitely mm-hmm. like I I think it, but it's important as well to find the people that you Uh trust as well Uh that you know they're giving you an honest opinion because they want you to do well Uh not because they're trying to hinder your sort of development from their own insecurities Uh right so yeah yeah. but also I feel like sometimes creatively you hit a wall like you mm, hit a wall. totally and sometimes you know people will be asking you know why am I not here why am I not here well what is where you're kind of boxing yourself creatively if you're like churning out loads of content but you're not growing as an artist there's a reason why it's not connecting to get to the right uh, person or to the right level so sometimes you might need to take a step back and actually reevaluate where you want to go like I know yeah. I can produce anything everyone knows that but I'm at that point where when I'm producing and I'm currently in advertising I'm getting mad like I'm fuming when little things go wrong or somebody's pissing me off I want to hit them but I can't (laughs) right so I'm like okay I can't be a producer anymore because I'm getting mad and I'm more want to be just in the creative space developing stuff so I'm just writing and I'll get be deciding to become more confident with my writing so I can get loads of feedback and work on the skills that I have you know that's the only way to do it so you have to kind of figure that out as well yeah totally I I think you you definitely always have to um sort of consider the path that you're on sometimes you can get really blinded by a single goal and if that goal is just to be this famous actor and blah 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 you have to sort of evaluate the reasons why you want that Mm -hmm. is it like do you feel that fame will sort of overshadow all your you know um, demons or like Mm -hmm. if I do this my life will be better do you know have you seen a Pixar soul yes 
Yeah, you know, when he says, like, today my life is going to start. And then when it did happen, he was like, I thought I'd feel different. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's because you haven't done, like, the work. Mm -hmm. Or you maybe didn't take the path that you were meant to go on. So sometimes you start on one and then you're like, oh, actually, you know, it's sort of like me. I started at this, uh, this actor sort of level. And then it was like, it wasn't fulfilling me in the the same ways. And I was getting these, these roles. I mean, I think I told you about this. Mm -hmm. I I went to, um, I went to three auditions and they were all essentially the same character written by these young men. And one was a prostitute who had a child. So that gave her a heart of gold, but she had a drug addiction. Another one was a prostitute who kills her child because she's in an abusive relationship. And the third one was a mother that was in an abusive relationship who turns to prostitution. So, and three completely different filmmakers, Mm. all viewing women in this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we were like so much more. And that sort of started me on this Mm -hmm. journey of, no like we 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 have to be more than these mothers and whores yeah <laughs> like yeah yeah it's it's really yeah, wrong yeah. Mm-hmm. and so like you know that's probably the way we sort of went with like Nimison and stuff like that where you know she's a really smart woman you know she's stuck mm-hmm. in the situation even though we didn't even end up making that film <laughs> no. that's another fucking story <laughs> If we but can, yeah. maybe part two. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I always said it could be a really good mini series, mm-hmm. like a bit yes, of a Black yes. Mirror vibe. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I think sometimes you, um, you, you know, you have to realize where the path is leading you and you have to acknowledge it and you have to take the step. And the most uncomfortable step is usually the right one. It's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Because you made a good point. Um, about that script and those three well those three different scripts by those male filmmakers it met, led on to my next point as you as an actor when you receive a script which you just don't think is good because that's the thing you can get like the spec of a script or the the you know the outline of a script and then you read it and you're like ah like damn like how do you as an actor have to kind of like navigate that yeah or like hype yourself up to be like okay cool I'm gonna get to set and I'm gonna follow the director's vision and get this done and like how wh- like what is that kind of what is that like oh right um okay <laughs> I'm gonna be brutally honest like if I don't like it I don't do it <laughs> oh, I love that I love that I love that no like okay. I, I think I did I did it one time where I was like no no I'll, I've made the commitment I'll do it I'll do it and it was the first time I ever had my first onset blow up Oh, <laughs> like where I literally ripped these people a new asshole. Mm. Like it was, and that's because I was also coming from a, a filmmaker side where it was completely disrespectful to all the actors that were on set. Okay. The directors came an hour late. We were all waiting outside. What? There was no apology made to us. We found out that the majority of the crew was getting paid and none of the actors were getting paid. And like a few of the actors were coming from other parts of you know England Mm, um and it was just and there was even points where we weren't even acting with each other there was no wide shot done only mid shots and close-ups which you know can work but it wasn't for the right reasons and Mm -hmm. anyway so yeah I mean sometimes it's so hard because people as looking from an independent perspective of filmmaking it's like you trying to figure out who can who can you pay like but no, yeah, at the totally. same time it's like good budgeting if you can't pay actors find a way to give them something you know like yeah we had to buy our own food as well what they did not feed us either oh okay. no. wow because that's the thing even if like okay you know you have to pay the crew you gotta pay sound you gotta pay at least a dp and at least a gaffer everyone else the director maybe maybe not you know everybody else you probably could get with back when it comes if you can't pay the actors at least reimburse their travel get them food yeah. like feed them give like really make sure that like, treat them like basic human yeah, beings they have everything <laughs> they need if they need a cab if they need this if they have like make sure but i bet they you had to use your own clothes as well right i bet you had to use your own clothes oh they 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 gave us like 
some t-shirts and stuff from the sponsor of the the film Mm. oh yeah don't i don't know (laughs) anyway it was It okay, was all okay. very unprofessional. Mm, mm, and okay. and that was the last time where I was like, if I get a gut feeling, mm-hmm. I'm just not doing it. And I think that's a really important thing mm-hmm. because I don't think you can do your best work mm. if you do not believe in the character. Now, this okay. is different if like you like the character, but the director wants you to try something different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he wants mm. you to sort of maybe do it in a way that you didn't feel was right. Mm-hmm. because sometimes it's nice to pull you out of that mindset and then you do yeah. something new and then you're like oh maybe i can take it here so okay. two very yeah. different things mm-hmm. yeah no that's good sure. to that's good to hear. i mean because you as a person i know that's how you are so that's fine yeah. for me it's like one of the main reasons that i stopped writing was because the actors that i was working with i knew they didn't like what i had written or the direction of where i was taking my show so it then made me feel really insecure about my abilities right like that but also at the same time I knew my limitations as a writer just like when you came on and start wrote newlyweds I knew I couldn't pull from any experience because at that time in my life I had never been in a relationship or had even experienced something like that so I didn't know what the hell I was doing but I knew what I wanted to I knew I, what, yeah, portray. I knew what I wanted the story to be. So that's why I was very honest with myself. But that's what it's about being honest with yourself, knowing your limitations and collaborating with other people and stuff like that. So, so, so that's, that's really good to hear. I'm going to ask every actor this, you <laughs> who should go for it. this season because <laughs> I really, I really want to know that because, you know, it's just like when you're watching like a show and, you see how the writing has just dipped over the years and it's like I wonder what the actors think about this like you know like yeah you know and they just there's nothing they can do I mean some of them are getting paid like 100k per episode so they're just like cool whatever but you know the quality of the show or film is just not there so that's really cool so leading on to my next point we've briefly mentioned newlyweds and nemesis so back in 2019 it's weird to say that because that's almost four years ago uh time is going uh i remember i read like what was it an early i don't know what draft it was of Nimison. oh don't do you know how many drafts there were of Nimison? it was like <laughs> 50 drafts like just yeah like yeah yeah no and, um, but also i remember we met up i remember we met up and we were just were chatting and i was telling you about newlyweds and i want to do this and he was like oh yeah and then we said okay we're going to work together and then you introduced Alex to me who's a great writer as well yeah and yeah I was like okay I need to do a writer's room so we were planning to do that writer's room in spring 2019 yeah. I remember and then you was and then during that time you also asked me to give you feedback on Nemesis. So I was reading it and giving you feedback and stuff like that and was going back and forth and then you asked me to come on as producer I was like well I might as well I'm giving you a bunch of feedback <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and I was like I want to do like other genres because at that time I was only known for comedy so I really wanted yeah. to like show on my portfolio my work that I can do everything not just one genre of yeah film and and web series because that's what I'm best known for and yeah we you know we developed that script we did the crowdfunding campaign we found a director that didn't work out then I remember you wanted to then you weren't going to direct and I said you should direct is your vision (laughs) yeah 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 you know and then you know we raised that money I mean, we did yeah. it was yeah oh that my crowd God. Funny and campaign. then I got pregnant yeah, yeah. You, know? <laughs> you, know what, you know what's so funny though about the whole pregnancy thing and yeah. like I hope people enjoy this you were actually the first person to know other than my husband because you and I were messaging so much yes. you were at the top of my list yes. <laughs> so yes. I sent you the the pea stick photo <laughs> And you did. I, I don't was, even remember. Wow. Oh um, my! I was, and you were like, "What is this?" <laughs> and I was like, "And I was like, oh my god! Can you please ignore it? Mm-hmm. That was for my husband." <laughs> So you knew before my husband when my son wow. when I was pregnant with my son. I wow wow. <laughs> so you know, funny I was thinking that before we were about to record. It's like we were in contact with each other like all the time for like two years. It's so yeah. funny how a project can really marry you together. Like you're just yeah. like, we would talk almost every day about updates about this and that. And what's great is that sometimes when you get on with somebody and then you can work together with them and it's fine as well. That's what was great. 
Yeah, Seems definitely. Familiar. I think it's um who else? I was talking to one of my writing partners about this, Scott, and he was saying, you know, sometimes when you're filmmaking, you spend more time with them than your family. Mm-hmm. And you do kind of get to know them on this different level because, you know, filmmaking is one of those art genres where it's, yeah. it's a collaborative effort, mm-hmm. like, and everybody has to be on board yeah. and it, yeah, it, it, it's crazy. And I think you and I, because we have the same sort of work ethic, we're, mm-hmm. we're always sort of thinking about the project mm-hmm. and we're always, mm-hmm. maybe that could be to our detriment. Let's, let's, you know, work life balance wise. Yeah, I've got better. <laughs> I've got better, honestly. I have got better. I have got better. Last year was very good for me. 2022 was very good. I didn't yeah. do anything but my podcast last year. That was so it. I only did writing. Like, I think after Nemesin, I mean, because I remember even we were doing a pre um, budget meeting, like a production meeting. And I was holding yes. Dylan, the newborn, I over remember Zoom. That. Yes, and I was having yes. to turn off my camera so I could breastfeed <laughs> yes, him and stuff I like that. And I remember. And that. I and my husband was kind of like, you just couldn't, you just couldn't take like a day. <laughs> like, but it was like at that point because you did get pregnant. I remember you was trying to like, you still wanted to do it while pregnant. And I said to you, no. Yeah, and baby, did. relax. We're doing it next year in 2's and I was like, it's fine. We'll just leave this. And oh we God. did. Because that's gonna was make like... me sound so unhealthy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but you know what it was because you had even before I joined the project, you had been working on it for ages. So I get you just wanted to get it done. Yeah. So I totally understand. So yeah, and that was peak pandemic. It's crazy that yeah. was three years ago. So we just kind of put pause on that and then did it next the following year. It was the best thing as well. Like it was, yeah. you know we were at that level that we could get more people onto set too we didn't have to be so restricted and yeah true and it was a really fun set as well and yeah great you know. set of team yeah 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 exactly yeah and I think what the cool thing about when we shot Nimerson was we was in that really nice apartment hotel and yeah. it was around the Euros when it was like what was it Euros 2020 what was pushed back and that was a crazy madness because England <laughs> were playing Scotland and Central London. Oh was, yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, we got yeah. rammed. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But that was such a beautiful place we shot in as well. Like I loved it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know? As I remember, like you know, early in the conversation, we were saying sometimes you know you have to pick the path like that's presented to you, and you know, with the original script of Nimison, that wasn't the one that we ended up shooting. Uh-huh. So if we wouldn't have filmed there, if <laughs> like things went the original way, mm-hmm. um. And yeah, that was a, it. Was a really, really nice place, and it was it was just nice because it had a kitchen, so we could have like really hot food, and yes. like we got that vegan yes. chef in as well. And exactly, it and made stuff, me so my bougie life. Like, oh, I want to yeah. have an apartment hotel. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, you just kind of live your life. You know, um, exactly. Because we no. shot that in what was it? Was it Bond Mayfair? Street? Yeah, Mayfair. Yeah, that was it. Brave Mayfair. And it was just great. Like, honestly, like you said, it was such a good two-day shoot. Great team. And how mm. was it for you balancing that? Because we produced it, obviously, together. And yeah. you were also directing, co-directing it with Scott. And then yeah. in it. Because you originally were going to be the lead. Well, co-lead. Like, But at the same time, because we changed the script from it being, you know, dying wife to dying dad, you know, yeah. what <laughs> that also like and explain what nimison means because a lot of people probably don't know what that is and probably can't. oh right <laughs> no no yeah that was oh my god the name <laughs> this okay so this is a, this is a fair warning to you to mm-hmm. you viewers sometimes when you're writing something and you're trying to be clever it actually messes you up you have to have a good name yeah and nimison as much as it's clever because mm-hmm. nimison comes from mnemosyne which is the greek god of memory and I thought Nimison is like a synthetic memory because that's what the original basis of the first film was, is that you could see your memories from a third person perspective, but then again, memories are malleable. So it's just your perspective. So it might not have happened that way, you know, and then you can show other people these memories as well. Um, so, yeah, so that's the sort of world that originally it was in. So we, the first movie was about the people that owned it, the person that wanted this technology to kind of go forward and everything like that. And then she ends up being trapped into the technology. 
And then Nimison is about the people that actually invented the technology, the one that we did. And it's sort of she breaks these ethical guidelines and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't want to say too much without giving it away because it hasn't premiered yes. yet. Yes. But essentially it's about a man that goes to end his life at this service that's provided for in the future. And then he finds out that his daughter is actually the one who created that whole world for him to die in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there you go. Him, like, how was it for you, like co-producing it with me, writing mm. it, co-directing it with Scott and then being in it? Like, what was that all like for you? Um, I mean, I do realize I have some control issues. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was definitely a new experience. Um, I, for a long time, people like you included and like so many people are like, you have to direct now. Like you're getting to that point where you you're mm-hmm. acting like a director, but you're not directing. Mm-hmm. And um, directing was definitely a new experience. I, I learned a lot off Scott mm-hmm. and I learned a lot off a lot off Carl as well, especially when it came to like what kind of lens to use for which thing and everything like that. Um, and it was really overwhelming as well because I had my son with my in-laws, mm-hmm. like that was back like at for home. the first time, wasn't it? As well, you had been away. Yeah. From- yeah, yeah. It was the first time I was away, like working when I had my baby, and he was only six, seven months then. Um, and it, it was definitely um. It was a lot to process. It took me a long time to process. And especially because I don't like editing films for a really long time. Mm-hmm. We got that edited like literally a month after and ready to get into the the festival season. We did actually. Um, and, but it was so good with the crowdfunding campaign and everything as well, because we were like so on it and we were like messaging people and we were, mm-hmm. so, I mean, like it was a relief mm-hmm. working with somebody that was, on it as well but I think if I were to do it again I would just tell myself that I have a lot of time it doesn't need to be done immediately yeah yeah and um I also think I had a lot of a lot to prove um because I'd been working on that for like five years Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it all came crashing down and I was like no I need to make this film Mm -hmm. and yeah and actually the original this script that we did I originally wrote it for the Harper's Bazaar competition that came out, you know, years ago, and it was shortlisted for that. Okay, right. And right. Um, they didn't even, like, I don't even think they made any of those films, to be honest. Like, I don't even know what happened there. No. <laughs> but, yeah. Funny. So, yeah, it's definitely, um, I don't recommend it. Yeah. I think <laughs> maybe one or two jobs is mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Um, But don't do what I did and go complete control freak. Yeah, I understand because your projects are like your children. This was your yeah. children, you had Dylan. You know, like the, that's just what it is. So, like, I've only now learned how to separate myself from my career, like that work-life balance. Because as far as I was concerned, my life is my work. But now yeah. it's like there's so much more to life. I can still pursue my career and my dreams and stuff like that, and have a life. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, and that's that's what it is because you know this industry is so not how can I put this there's no security in this industry you know there's no security especially if you decide to be freelance or do it independently you can get your yeah. cushy you know safe job where you feel like you're a filmmaker because you're doing advertising <laughs> but yeah. like if you're really in it like it's not it's long hours it's unsociable hours it's you know you're chasing those invoices like it's not an easy life to live you know if you want that soft life go and work in a corporation and work your way up so yeah it it definitely takes a certain type of person for Mm -hmm. sure I think I also had a lot to prove as well because as as you said like you know I I think a lot of a lot of um, people that have children go through this where it's it becomes a death of self like you you are no longer the person you were before because you have this little human being that you now have to take care of and I think I was so desperate to hold on to what little I had left with Nimison that I was like I went full you know and I wanted to say I said to Jim I was like you know I don't want Dylan to to see me as a filmmaker and say I never finished anything or you know I put all this pressure on myself and like and now I'm I'm so different like 
you know, I'm late to things sometimes. Like, you know me, I'm like 20 minutes early and <laughs> yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but yeah. now, like with my kid, I'm like, I will get there when I get there and you will be happy about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally understand. But that's fine because you are a mother, you know, like and yeah, you understand yeah. that. So, but it's like, I always say it's communication. I think that's for us, me and you are very big on that. If you're going to be yeah. late, yeah, you're going to be late, you know, but communicate that. Don't just show up 20 minutes late and we're like panicking, like, where the hell are you? That's the... Oh, absolutely. I think difference. it is so... Mm-hmm. When people are like, oh, I've just been busy, I've just been this. It does not take long to send a text message. No, it, it is literally 30 seconds. So you, what you need to evaluate if you can't send a text message mm-hmm. is how much you respect the person that you're exactly. meeting because exactly. you do not respect their time. Exactly. The one thing that we all have in common mm-hmm. is time. Yeah you know so send the message even if you don't fucking want to just Mm -hmm. send the message going I'm gonna be late Mm -hmm. I'm sorry and then the person can fume a little bit on their end but they know what's happening Mm -hmm. you know easy exactly but you know one thing we should be proud of Nimison it did well it got awards I was able to go to a film festival and accept an award on our colorist behalf for the you know the yeah, yeah. reading was great so it had a great festival run and it's going it to release soon on a platform in March so tell us more about that yeah film shortage um so it's going to release on film shortage in March we've got two more festivals that we're waiting to hear back from um but yeah we like to be honest mm-hmm. when we started winning awards and stuff I was like super surprised <laughs> I was I was like but I was just proud it was done yeah you know yeah, what I mean? yeah 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 I, I didn't give it I, didn't, I was just like no matter what happens from this point I can say to myself I did it I did it while I had a baby mm-hmm. it's done mm-hmm. that is my accomplishment then all of a sudden it was like we got into this festival we won this award we won this award we won this award and like mm-hmm. i'm actually going to get scott to do the poster and just cover it in all the oh the nice that would be yeah, yeah yeah so yeah. once it's done i could just i can just look at that and be like do you know what i actually we actually yeah. fucking did yeah, it yeah, like yeah, yeah. now you should be proud. yeah you should be so proud because that's yeah the I said. it's such people don't realize unless you're in it you don't understand how much work it is and that's why yeah I'm, that's why I have taken a break. Well, I wouldn't say break. I've just decided no more independent stuff. Like, no, nobody contacted me. Oh, let's, can we do this? Like, trying to raise money, trying to get funding. It's a yeah. long process. Come to me with, oh, I have 10 grand. Okay, cool. Let's shoot it. I'm not trying to be in that struggle <laughs> kind of like bit anymore because it's too much. No, no. Yeah, I think you, I think you do have to make those sort of decisions. Like, mm. I think you have to... I think first of all assess where you are if you're just starting out like mm-hmm. you you got to put in the work and you got to do that sort of yeah, stuff and you got to do course. the struggle and stuff mm-hmm. um but like I think for us like even with me now I'm really just focusing on getting funding from like you know film whales and and mm-hmm. that sort of thing for the projects that I'm doing mm-hmm. because I feel like I I've done the the self made thing you know because I did 12 a year as well where you know we made the one short film a month for a year listen (laughs) oh don't I you know I think that's where the majority of my gray hair came from (laughs) and some of those films are never ever going to be seen they are they are so deep in the web Mm. that like literally they are just pixels like no way um but like I feel like I think you and I probably are both at that point where we're like actually no we want to we want to go to that next level and we're going to push for that next level and that next level actually is a lot of just a lot of self-work isn't it it's sort of a little a lonely road Mm -hmm. filling out applications and yes Yes, and stuff exactly yeah but I think it's good to hear that you are just focusing on writing now because you're very talented I love the work that you do it's very dark thank you that's what I like as well because we need (laughs) dark stuff because the thing is like you have such a great imagination and you just kind of go there with your ideas and it's on it's not conventional idea that's what drew drew me to Nemesin as well and a lot of people tripped up on the name they didn't know how to pronounce it oh don't that's so dumb like I'm so sorry (laughs) it's fine it's just a fun it's a running joke because it took me ages to learn how to say it as well and but now there's so much anticipation for people to see it like loads of people always still ask me oh when's it out I want to see I want to see it so I'm looking forward to seeing everyone else's um reaction to it as well so Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know I look I watch it now and I'm like oh man I would do so many things differently in terms of script but you should do that with your film oh like, yeah 100 percent. you have to reflect and have mm-hmm. to be like what could I do better obviously don't don't bug yourself down in the past yeah, yeah but yeah. like just like you know 
totally would have changed a couple of things, mm-hmm. especially for the ending. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I think with my writing and stuff now, I just kind of want to explore ideas that sort of make me like things that I really dwell on. Like, so mm-hmm. when I had my son, like a lot of things went wrong, like um, in terms of like the post, uh, the post surgery, everything like that. Cause I had a C-section okay. um, and it, it was a lot to sort of process. And I actually wrote a script script recently, which is called bed rest. And it was essentially about a hospital bed attacking this new mother you know it's this very like high you know what I'm concept saying about your ideas see what i'm saying <laughs> yeah but they were all things that like happened to me from these from different staff mm-hmm. like at the nhs and you know they were so overrun and it was a pandemic and everything and like no hate to them whatsoever because it is not their fault no. yeah there was they you know they they need mm-hmm. the fucking money just fucking pay them exactly um um, but because of what happened, the only way I could process it was like take away all the people and make it like a single mm-hmm. entity tormenting this woman mm-hmm. who has just had a baby. And yeah, and there was like a lot in it. But that's actually because of that short film, even though it hasn't really gone anywhere in terms of being made, I've actually got in the door with a couple of production companies now. Mm-hmm. Great. And we're like having those conversations and they were like, we literally just want to know how you think because we were like, what the fuck when we read the script? <laughs> and I was like, yes, I love that because yes, that's what I, when I read your work, exactly. That's what I think. This is brilliant. So maybe I need more therapy. I don't know if I can get more <laughs> therapy, but like. Well, okay. Don't get it <laughs> until you get that, that deal. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> wait, get wait, that money. Wait. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then I can put myself for in like five days a week and that will be like sweet. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Learn um, how to switch it on and off. That's what you need. Yeah. To- I'm not completely tormented <laughs> in my, my mind. Exactly. Um, so. But yeah, but that's, it's just, I think, I think the way writing sort of helped me, it sort of helped me like visualize the, those things that I, I, I don't fully understand until mm-hmm. I can like conceptualize them. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I heard this quote recently um, called, you are like the five people that you hang out with the most something along those lines okay. essentially like you tend to sort of um oh god what's the word you you slowly become the people that you hang out with i've heard that before you know yeah, yeah so yeah. i was kind of like, how can i visualize this in the best way and the way i visualized it is like this sort of androgynous being walking upstairs with all these strings attached to him <laughs> and sometimes the strings like pull them down or like lift them up or disappear completely because you know people come and go from your life yeah true. and um yeah i think it's just a, a way to sort of get my thoughts in a a manner which is not so jumbled <laughs> No, it's good. It's good. No, yeah, yeah. I'm, excited. I'm very excited for you. I'm Thanks. Really because you're such a talented writer, and I know how much work you put in to all of your work. So I'm looking forward. Oh, thank you. To Let me know the premiere because I want to be there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> even totally. If, even if it is in Wales, I will come down to Wales because I've never been. <laughs> so. <laughs> by all means I mean to be fair like I, I'm I'm in Swansea um, and we moved here because of my husband and um, since I've had my kids and stuff like that I, I don't do much traveling around if I can do all my meetings over zoom I absolutely will <laughs> and it will be in the days where they have daycare so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice so where can people find you you know like your other projects which you want them to see and yeah just reiterate again when Nimison will be out yeah, sure. So Nimison will be out in March on Film Shortage. Um, it'll premiere there. And then um, in terms of me, in terms of my social media recently, I got rid of Twitter because I was just like, oh, this is just a shambles and I do not want to be a part of Elon Musk's little experiment <laughs> here. Um, and I've actually set my Instagram profile to, pro- uh, to private. But mm-hmm. like you can totally follow me at Jenna Cacioli mm-hmm. there. And um, where else? Uh, da, 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 da. in terms of actual stuff hmm, I have a website jettacacholi.com yeah. go to the go to that and that could probably tell you a lot more to be yeah. honest I think I, I have deleted a lot of the stuff I've made for Nemison mm-hmm. well, oh wait no shit I do have a film on my Instagram of the of short horror that I made this is terrible 
when you do interviews, you should know what you have out there, right? Yes, you should. <laughs> and I keep listening because this is funny. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, far out. Mm-hmm. Go to my website. I will update it. You can see more what's in development there and what I've got going on. And um, yeah, that is better than me trying to verbally regurgitate it right now. <laughs> and you can also <laughs> check out Newlyweds because Jeddah is one of the co-writers on it as well. And yes. listeners have heard me talk about Newlyweds too much and they've heard the whole process <laughs> of what that hell was um making yeah. new words uh, so yeah you can also see her great writing there as well and stuff like that so yeah Jeddah, thanks for coming on the show it's been great catching up we should catch yeah. up more actually because yeah we, we should yeah but as you said for the two years we were like married so yeah. we needed we needed space from each other yeah, yeah, let's yeah, face yeah. it like all good relationships you just need to let it breathe and then exactly. you come back together exactly <laughs> Yeah. And I was going to say thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. I had to like when I was going to do this season of the, th- of the podcast, season three, and it was all on actors. I was like, I have to have Jeddah. So, so yeah, of course. Uh-huh. Made sense. Made sense. Well, yeah. Well, thanks, yeah, guys, for listening. You can follow me all on my usual socials. You know them. There's a bunch of them. So yeah, stay tuned for new episodes coming soon.